So now we're finishing up lecture um, on probability. We're in 4.1. This is the last part of 4.1. And we're looking at what's called a tree diagram. So a tree diagram can be used to list all the possibilities in a sample space of complicated events. Okay, so to draw this tree diagram, we're going to first draw what's called a node that represents our event, and then we draw uh, branches that represent the outcomes of the event. So let's look at this example. Assume a coin is tossed two times. Find the probability of getting two tails. So we draw this tree diagram. Uh, we have the first toss. You have two outcomes, heads or tails. Okay, so the tree diagram starts with two branches. Think of this as the first node here. You have heads or tails. Then we have the second toss. So if we get heads the first time, we still have to toss the coin one more time. The outcomes are heads or tails. And the same holds for tails, heads or tails. So it turns out we will have, our sample space will have four outcomes. Two heads, heads, tails, tails, heads, all tails, two tails. And that's represented below. This is our sample space. So if we now want to compute the probability, uh, remember, we're looking for the probability of getting two tails. So here's two tails. So that is one out of four possibilities, and that would be the answer. Let's go on to a second question here. It says, assume that a family has two children. Find the probability that the family will have exa exactly one girl. Use a tree diagram. So once again, we draw the branches. The fir first branch in the the first branches represent boys and girls. And then the other branches represent the gender of the second child. So if you have a boy and then you have a second child, you can have a second boy or a girl. If you have a girl, you could have the second child could be a boy or a second girl. So we list all those possibilities. Boy, 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 girl, girl, boy, or two girls. So there's four possibilities. And remember, we want to find the probability that the family will have one girl. So it turns out that there's two possibilities where the family has one girl. Either the second girl, either the second child's a girl or the first child is a girl. So two out of four, which reduces to one half. Okay, uh, we, you can pause the video at this stage and work on problems two and three. Um, they just are some tree diagrams. We'll post the answers uh, later on in the module. If you're ready, we'll move on to the addition rules. So now we're in section 4.2. So let me just type that in. We are now in section 4.2 in our book. Um, and let's just define, what. first of all, what are mutually ex exclusive events. So we say that <clears throat> events are mutually exclusive if they can occur simultaneously. Uh, if they cannot occur simultaneously, meaning they have nothing in common. So we draw a Venn diagram um, that's used quite a bit in logic. And you, typically if the events are not touching, then we say that the events are mutually exclusive. So we have an example. It says, let A be the set of all kings in the standard deck, and let B be the set of all jacks in the standard deck. The two sets are mutually exclusive because they have nothing in common. So we have all kings, we have all jacks. They have nothing in common. Okay, so um, at this stage, you might want to think of two other examples of mutually exclusive events. Okay. Now we're prepared to mention our first addition rule, addition rule one. It states the following, the probability that two mutually exclusive events A or B will occur is found using this formula. It's the probability of A or B, which is equal to probability of A plus probability of B. So let's go back to this problem here and let's compute our answer. So um, remember, we're trying to find the probability of, of selecting a king or a jack, so there's four kings, so four out of 52, plus four jacks, four out of 52. If we add the two probabilities together, we get eight out of 52, which reduces to two out of 13. 
And that's our answer. Let's take a look at, there's a couple of other uh, problems here. So I'm going to work on problem three. It says two dice, and we'll just mention, are tossed once. Compute the chance of getting a sum of 6 or 12. Well, remember, I did supply the class with the outcomes for a sum of two dice. And to calculate the probability of getting a sum of 6, we can just count all the pairs in this row. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's see, yes. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there's five ways of getting a sum of 6 out of 36 possibilities. So when you have two dice, it's the total number of possibilities is 36, plus the probability of getting a sum of 12. Remember, for a sum of 12, that's there's only one pair. And um, the, the uh, kind of the um, slang word for that is boxcars. So 1 out of 36, we add the 2 together, 6 out of 36, which reduces to 1 sixth. Uh, you might want to pause the video and work on these two problems. As we mentioned before, we'll post the answers later. If you're ready, let's move on to um, our next section, which deals with the addition rule, but now our events are not mutually exclusive, meaning they have some type of outcome in common. And this is represented by our Venn diagram. So we have the kings, we have the diamonds, and we do have um, some, some outcomes in common. It's actually just one, it's the king of diamonds. So there is a card that's both a king and a diamond. Okay, so just looking at our example, it just says let A be the set of all kings in the deck, let B be the set of all diamonds. These two sets are not mutually ex exclusive because they do have the King of Diamonds in common. And the reason why we want to be aware of this rule is because when um, we're adding the two events in terms of probability, we want to avoid double counting. So go ahead and think of some other examples that might apply in the real world that come to mind to you. You could post them in the discussion board. So now it's officially uh, look at addition rule number two. It just says the probability that two non-mutually exclusive events A or B will occur is this. It's probability of A or B, so that's equal to probability of A plus probability of B minus the probability of A and B, what they have in common. So we're going to work out this example here. So we're trying to find a card that's a king or a diamond. Well, Remember, there's four kings in the in the deck, so the, the chance of getting a king is 4 out of 52. There's 13 diamonds in the deck, so 13 out of 52 for the diamonds. But remember, we're double counting the king of diamonds. Let's just show this using the sample space. So we have 13 diamonds, we have four kings, and we're over counting the king of diamonds. So we have to subtract the king of diamonds out, 1 out of 52. So when we add and subtract, we end up with 16 out of 52, which reduces to 4 out of 13. And that's the answer. And I'll let you folks go ahead and try these three problems using addition rule number 2. And once again, post any questions in the discussion board. We'll go ahead and stop the video right here.